Welcome to Controlled Insanity, the show where we never know what we're talking about, but we always know that we're right. This episode is on uncomputable functions. So uncomputable functions are pretty much the perfect example of mathematician thinking. Okay, Mathematicians, they're like, uh, I want to learn how to program. Now a normal person, you would just you would just try it, right? You would go through a tutorial and you would learn how to program. A mathematician would say, first thing I've got to do is figure out everything that's impossible, then I'll just do what's left over. That's how to program. Then I'll know. Yeah, that's mathematician thinking for you. So the idea of an uncomputable function is it's, it's a function that a computer can't do. And it's a function over the natural numbers. So you know the natural numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Those are very important to mathematicians. Okay? So it at first it may seem surprising that there are functions that computers can't do, but really, when you think about it, it should be kind of obvious. Okay? So I'm going to explain why, and then I'm going to give you some examples, okay? So first of all, first of all, the deal with programs is that you can put them all in a list, starting from zero, okay? And the, the way we know we can do this is every program can be read as a number, okay? So if you think of any programming language, the program is given to it, to the the interpreter, I mean, the, the program is given as a string, right? So behind the scenes in the computer, that's just ones and zeros, okay? So you can think of that as a number. It's just a very long number in base 2. That's your program. So I can make a, a function that says, give me the zeroth program give me the tenth program and I got all of the programs in the list okay the list from zero on to infinity the, the way we do it is we start at zero and we say is this a valid program then we try one is this a valid program and so on okay and when we find a valid program then we return it and we do it as many times as needed Okay, so if I want the nth program, we do this n times. Then you give me the next one because we start at zero, right? So we can get all the programs in a big list. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, isn't there a difference between if we were to use different programming languages like, like C versus Fortran? No. We still get every program. That just changes the order that they come in. Because think about it. Let's say we're writing programs in C. Okay, so we're saying we're, we're getting all of the valid C programs in our list here, right? Well, eventually we'll get to programs that are like here's a Fortran compiler written in C and here's a string containing a Fortran program. And then the compiler compiles the program and runs it. Okay? So if we do every C program, eventually we also get every Fortran program and every other programming language. And of course, if we, if we started with Fortran, we would get every C program too. So we got every program. We got every program in our list. However, you can't put functions over the natural numbers in a list. Okay? Programs are countable, whereas functions are uncountable. Okay? How, how do we know that? Well, one thing that I said, well, the, the thing that makes the programs countable is that they're all finite, right? It's, every program is a finite string. 
Well, I mean, I've never seen an infinitely long program, and I bet you haven't either. So programs are finite. But when you think about it, a function over the natural numbers might require an infinite amount of information to specify, right? Because what is a function? It's an infinite list, isn't it? Because we say here, here's the output for input 0, here's the output for input 1, here's the output for input 2. See, it's a, it's a big list over the natural numbers. Now, it, it's not necessarily the case that every possible list, you know, every possible function is, you know, corresponds to a pattern that, that can be described by a program. It's just not necessarily the case. And we can prove this using what's called a diagonal argument. Okay? So here's the idea of a diagonal argument. You give me a list and you tell me that the list is comprehensive. And I use the list against you. I say, using your list, I've made a new thing that isn't in the list. Ha 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 ha. That's a diagonal argument. Okay? So let's let's assume that uh, the functions over the natural numbers are in a list. Okay? We have a list of all of the functions over the natural numbers. Here's what I do. I say I'm going to make a new function over the natural numbers that's not in your list. And the way I do it is I define it. I define this function by saying it takes n as the input and it applies the nth program in your list to n. Okay? And it returns that value plus 1. Well, this new function is definitely different from everything in your list, isn't it? Because everything, everything in the list has a unique position. Okay, so function n, you try the nth input, and it's definitely different from my new fun function. Because I, I took that output and I added 1. See, the programs are uncountable. Now, if you've heard about uh, diagonal arguments before, you might have heard about it in the proof that, that the rational numbers are countable, whereas the real numbers are uncountable. Okay? So you can kind of think of programs as being like the rational numbers and functions over the natural numbers as being kind of like the real numbers. That's kind of how I think about it. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, I mean, are they exactly the same or are they just like each other? Is this an analogy or is this, you know, absolute? Well, that gets us into the continuum hypothesis and we're not going to go there. So what we want to try to do is do a diagonal argument over our list of programs. Because remember I said earlier, we have a list of all the programs. Let's try to do a diagonal argument on that. Well, there is a wrinkle. And the wrinkle is not every program is a function. Okay. A function, according to mathematicians, always has to return a value, okay? But a program can go into an infinite, infinite loop and never return a value. Or I should say, it, it, it can go, it can enter a, uh, a state where it never returns a value. That doesn't mean that it's entered a loop. There are many ways that a program can fail to return. Uh, but the point is that programs are allowed to, uh, to not return anything. They're allowed to go on forever, whereas functions are not. So what do we do about this? Well, 
you might say we got all of the, the programs in a list so can we just get all the computable functions in another list? I mean can we eliminate the programs that aren't functions? It turns out we cannot do that, okay? Because let's say that we could. Let's say that there was a computable function which told us the nth the nth computable function in a comprehensive list. Well, we can use a diagonal argument on that, can't we? So I can say I'm going to make a new computable function. And the new computable function is you take the nth function in your list and you apply it to n and that's add 1 and that's the value that the function returns for n so as as long as the list that you gave me is computable in other words i can it's a computable function to get the nth element in the list then the new function is also computable and it's it's not in the list because it's definitely different from everything in the list. Therefore, there is not a list of the computable functions which is computable. In other words, in which we can just pick out the nth element in the list using a computer. Well, what have we done? We found our first uncomputable function, haven't we? And it's just happened naturally, okay? We didn't know we were going there, okay? Uh, the function that says, give me the nth computable function, that function is uncomputable. Wow. Well, this is a great function, but the problem with it is that it's a little too complicated, okay? Um, it, it turns out that it's more impossible than it needs to be, okay? So I'm going to I'm going to tell you another un, uncomputable function, um, and that's really that's the important one. But we did find this nice one along the way, so. Um, Remember, originally I said uh, maybe we could try to make a list of all the computable functions, you know, out of our list of programs, okay? So instead, what we do is we say, here is a new function that uh, we use our list of programs to define. And we say, if the nth program in the list of programs halts when the input is n, then return that value plus 1. And if it doesn't halt, just return 0. Okay, That's definitely a function because it, it always returns a value. Okay, Because e either the uh, either it halts or it doesn't, right? And it returns a value in either case. Okay. So this new function is not in the list. And the list definitely includes every computable function. We don't, we don't know which items in the list are the computable functions, but it's definitely different from all of them. Because we say, if the program in the list fails to halt for the value n, well, then we don't care about it because it's definitely not a function. And if it does halt, well, maybe it is. Maybe it's a function, so we will return something different from that value just in case. That definitely gets all of the computable functions, okay? So we found a new uncomputable function. Now, um, in math books, this particular function doesn't have a name because it's just a stepping stone to the important one, which is the halting function. That's the function that we, we use to detect whether 
the nth program halts for input n. Okay? We needed to know that in order to define the new function. Okay? And the halting function must be uncomputable because you know the other function that we made out of it is uncomputable. Now the halting function says does the nth program halt for input n? Okay, that's the halting function. And that is the mathematician's favorite uncomputable function. It turns out that every uncomputable function is either more difficult than or equivalent to the halting function. So the halting function is like it's like level one. It's like the level one uncomputable functions. Now it turns out the function that I made before, which I said was too hard, that's like a level two, okay? Because it turns out that the, the computable functions can't even be in a recursively enumerable set. So that's more difficult. Uh, now, I'm not going to explain all that, but that's that's what happens. Okay. So we have we have the halting function, and that's the best one. That's the favorite uncomputable function. Now at this point, at this point, I think most people would say, "Wow! I mean, there are uncomputable functions. I mean, how profound! That is a limit on me that I didn't." know about before that we 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 learned about through math and the mathematician is like well what if we could compute the uncomputable function and you're like well why would we do that i mean we can't we we know that we can't do it and the mathematician is like but what if we could do the halting function? What if we did know the halting function? What could we do then? And you're like, well, I don't know. Why, why would we think that? You know, that's math thinking, okay? So the mathematician is like, it turns out that there's still more functions that you can't do. If you have the un if you have the halting function you can define new functions in terms of whether other functions defined using the halting function halt wow that's level two in fact there's also a level three it just goes on that's the arithmetic hierarchy that's math thinking okay they discovered an infinite mountain of more and more impossible hypotheticals. That's what mathematicians think is very important. <laughs> mathematicians. So anyway, uh, let's talk about why the halting function is kind of like a, like it requires an infinite amount of information to convey. Here's the problem with predicting the halting function, okay? We're kind of asking about what random programs are going to do, and we need to know an, possibly an arbitrary number of steps in the future, okay? Because, uh, you know, we're not allowed to say, uh, well, the program has been running for an infinite amount of time, are we? We're not allowed to wait that long. So we have to... We have to predict an infinite number of steps in the future. And we have to do that with the universal program. Because when you're just, you know, saying stuff about random programs, I mean, you're going to get the universal program in there. Lots of programs are universal, okay? And when you got the universal program, that means it could run any other program, okay? 
Okay, so when you're talking about predicting what random programs are are going to do in the future, you're really thinking about like, like, what other programs could be created and then run by the universal program. That's that's kind of what happens, and you can make bigger and bigger programs that get run you know, by the universal program. And then they make a new program that gets run by the universal program. It, it just goes on. There's no, there's no limit to this. So you have to know about bigger and bigger programs as you predict further and further ahead. And when you're talking about an infinite number of steps in the future, you, you kind of have to know about arbitrarily big programs, okay? So it's kind of like, it's kind of like in order to, to write down the, ha the halting function, you would already have to know it, okay? That's kind of how, how the halting function can be said to have an infinite description. Because the, the only way to get a computer to do it is you would just have to have an infinite list of all of the programs. And the computer would just have to go down the list and it says, uh, is, is this the program I'm looking for? No. Is this the program I'm looking for? And when it finally reaches the right one, then it says yes or no. The program halts or not, you know, just based on what's written in the list. So that's uncomputable functions. 